Sir and Kierkegaard, Various Readings The Concise Dictionary of Religious Knowledge and Gazetter Edited by Talbot Wilson Chambers, Frank Hugh Foster, Samuel Macaulay Jackson In 1889 Article by C. P. Pages 544 to 545 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Hans Lawson Martinson Licentiate Theology, Copenhagen, 1837, Doctor of Divinity, Kiel, 1840, Lutheran Bishop. Born at Flinsburg in the Duchy of Schleswig, August 19, 1808. Died in Copenhagen, February 3, 1884. He studied theology and philosophy in Copenhagen, 1827 to 1832. Traveled, 1834 to 1836. Began to lecture on philosophy in the University of Copenhagen in 1838. Was appointed professor of theology in 1840 and became bishop of Zealand that is, primate of the Danish church in 1854. He grew up and developed in close contact with, and yet entirely independent of the various movements in the Danish church and their representatives, Minster, Clausen, Grundtvig, etc. And though he never became a leader himself of any party, he brought into the Danish church a strong but thoroughly digested influence from Hegel and Schelling on the one side, and Father Bader and the mystics on the other, which leavened its whole life. His first lectures in the university created great enthusiasm, the natural result of the novelty of his standpoint and the charm of his talent. Later on, he met with sharp opposition on account of the delusiveness of this very standpoint, it was said, and the danger of his talent. But neither the one circumstance nor the other seems to have had any effect upon him personally. In his quiet and reserved way, he continued, uninterrupted and undisturbed, to unfold his ideas. And as he reached onward, the attention widened and deepened around him. He is one of the most remarkable representatives of what is called speculative theology, a natural and inborn opposition between faith and science, theology and philosophy, he absolutely denied. And where a discrepancy actually occurred, he proposed a mistake, an error as its origin. Science, he said, can never reach a complete, all-encompassing conception of existence, of nature and history, unless it starts from the divine revelation in Holy Scripture as its center in faith, though in its innermost kernel a simple movement of conscience. The relation between God and man feels itself with necessity driven toward a scientific and systematic demonstration of its contents. But Holy Scripture is and must always remain the authoritative guide and absolute norm for such a demonstration. And in spite of its many resplendent novelties and details, his dogmatics published in Danish in 1849 and afterward in two German translations, keeps strictly within the pale of the doctrinal system of the old Lutheran Church. In Denmark, this book and the standpoint it represents, this complete union between faith and science, between theology and philosophy, and the speculative principle on which it was founded, was vehemently attacked by Søren Kierkegaard, to whom every and any scientific conception was utterly indifferent, as it has and can have no bearing whatsoever upon man's relation to God. And by Rasmus Nielsen, who protested that it was not the union, but, on the contrary, the opposition between faith and science, which made it possible for the human consciousness to hold them both by the same grip. But upon Martinson, those attacks continued through years, seem to have made only a very slight impression. With his speculative standpoint, he connected several elements of mysticism and theosophy. While traveling as a young man in Germany, he studied the mystics with great enthusiasm, and the result of those studies was the publication in 1840 of his Meister Eckhart, translated into German in 1842. They are also quite conspicuous in his dogmatics in his idea of Christ as a new Adam, whose apparition is not only of spiritual, 
but also of cosmic import and of the miracle as the key to the sacraments on the natural part of man as building up within him the body of resurrection etc and they are even recognizable in his last great work christian ethics eighteen seventy one to seventy eight in eight volumes immediately translated into german and often reprinted more especially in volume two individual ethics the theosophical elements developed later under the influence of schelling's last writing though he received the first impulse in that direction from bader they are principally met with in his faith and science published in eighteen sixty seven against rasmus nielsen translated into german in jarbucher fur duce theologie fourteen eighteen sixty nine and jacob bohme eighteen eighty one translated into german eighteen eighty two in his development of the logical, physical, and ethical idea of God, in his idea of the glory of God as the uncreated heavens, etc., his mysticism and theosophy were, however, very far from drawing him away from the world in which he lived. On the contrary, some of the best things which come from his pen are a number of memoirs on Minster, Grundtvig, Rasmus Nielsen, etc., not seldom of a polemic character and always intended for some practical instantaneous effect by the sharp just and noble light which they throw both on persons and problems they have proved invaluable contributions to danish culture of a somewhat similar character are also his sermons of which he published several collections they are more contemplative than stirring they instruct without exciting shortly before he died he published his autobiography also translated into German, Aus Meinen Leben, 1888, condensed translation of the article of P. Madsen in supplement to second edition of Herzog, Real Encyclopodie, in English have appeared of Martinson's works, His Christian Dogmatics, Edinburgh, 1866, Christian Ethics, 1873 to 1882, eight volumes. In German, besides those mentioned above, his correspondence with Dorner, Briefwitchell, Berlin, 1888, two volumes. Article by C. P. End of recording. Hans Lassen Martinson by C. P. Pages 544 to 545.